you ever shopped in the Pioneer Market? Yeah, yeah. loads of times. What do you go there for? Um, just little bits and bobs. Before we used to go into the butchers and everything. We used to go there ever since we were little, about three years old. And do you shop in the Pioneer Market? No. no? <laughs> Why don't you shop there? Because uh, it's... It's just, it looks old and it, it doesn't look as attractive as the exchange. I mean, I know it's got certain things there, like I get CDs from Backtracks. They've got rare CDs that you can't really get. Did you used to shop in the Pioneer Market? Yes, years ago. Uh, it was in a better condition. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yes, it was in a better condition then, you know. Um, what did you used to shop there? What did you used to get from the Pioneer Market? Uh, wool and things like that when I used to knit for the children, you know. But um, it's very bad. Yes, it's, it's falling down, <laughs> really. Pioneer Market. Over 80 years old and soon to be demolished, this is Ilford's oldest indoor shopping centre, but years of neglect and underinvestment have seen a once bustling port of call for shoppers become a decrepit, uninviting shadow of its former self. Despite strong opposition from the shopkeepers, the land on which Pioneer Market stands has been sold for the development of two 30-storey apartment blocks. That's the Articles of Association, incorporated the 16th day of February 1922. The establishment of Pioneer Market in the early 1920s was largely due to Ardashir Kapadia, an Indian barrister and Ilford's first Asian councillor. Market trading in Ilford took place at unfixed sites around the town and shopkeepers argued that this encroached upon their businesses. Mr Capadia joined the rejected traders to purchase a permanent location from which to do business. That location was the grounds of Malcolm Lodge, where there was sufficient space to house numerous stalls. In 1939 the lodge was sold by its owner Frederick Allard and this paved the way for further development of the expanding trade. For another 60 years, Pioneer Market grew to become a focal point for Ilford's shopping community and synonymous with affordable quality and a high level of service. Paul Bishop has dedicated over 40 years of his life towards working in Pioneer Market. After the First World War, my grandfather and about six, seven other men wanted to go into a market which is now the Sainsbury's site. This site here was also an open field. He went round with these other people, one with a lawyer and the other were just plain businessmen, and asked the council if they could rent this site. So they said yes. I think at the time they rented it, but they bought it a little bit later. And uh, the market was opened for anybody of any race, creed, colour, anything to trade on the site. And gradually, over the years, grew and grew and grew until we got what we got today. There was 12 traditional butchers, butchers within, within 15 minutes of here. There was 12. It's amazing. And we, we're proud to say that we're the last one. We're the last one. We we're not, the last we're not one. going through choice. <laughs> Bill Machin and Harry Chittick are marking over 50 years of trade with Frank's Butchers and admit having to move with the times to sustain a business. There's obviously a lot of uh, different nationalities there, but then they, they all have different, different cuts of meat and you get to, you get to know them as well. So we've, had to, we've had to alter our butchery, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, to, to accommodate, to accommodate them. The, the different clientele. I've seen hundreds, literally hundreds of shops come in and everyone thinks they can run a shop. Everybody thinks it's easy. 99% of the customers, with no exaggeration, were known to me and are still known to me. They come in here, they know that I won't give them something that's not suitable for them, that they will be happy with, that the quality is good and it's a fair price. Have you found that those customers return? Yeah, constantly much to my anger sometimes, but constantly keep coming in. But no, it's, it's almost as if we provide some sort of community service, that if they're in Ilford, um, I'm always on their list of somewhere to go. It's like, you know, go and get a loaf of bread for your mum and go to cash. Ash Holder has run Pyramid Technology for the last 10 years and also regards regular clients as the reason for his success. 
but the service I provide, nobody else can provide that one to one friendly right. local guy you come to and That's you right. know have a small thing done. Uh, the big stores more or less they're guys that they're more or less salespeople. Uh, the talent I've got I've acquired over the years, there's nobody can compete with me. But no, they wouldn't be a bit like me anymore. Mm. It'd be something of the past. Fortunately, I will miss it because mm. it is my livelihood. And uh, it's sad to see the way it's been run down. Now, well, that was one of the things that appealed to a lot of people in this shop. They never knew what they was going to find in here. I've had people in here in, uh, on their hands and knees going underneath the units looking for things. And they enjoy it. It's a sort of ramage shop. You know, you come in here, you've got to look. Yeah. Uh, I once spent an entire week putting everything in alphabetical order and every time as I was doing it someone was coming along behind me and messing it up so from that day on I said no if they want it they've got to look for it sure. I mean that's often the best way because yeah. they'll come across something yeah. they don't even want well that is it I mean, you know, don't... some people you can lose customers by that way but you can also gain because some people they can't be bothered to look so they walk out but they're not the serious ones the serious ones will come in and they'll look for what they want and like you say I'll Halfway through, they find, oh, I wanted this one for years. Yeah. And they go on, and, they, and sometimes they spend two or three times in the amount they intended. The market has not been looked after the way it should have been. It's decaying. It has been decaying for the last, well, ever since I came here, it's been decaying. And everyone in here has been talking it down ever since. The council could have intervened. I mean, they could have bought the place and redeveloped the place and give us a better say. But the purchase of the land has meant traders have been forced to close and relocate, which has proved difficult for some. Seven years we've been here. We have been, been here with small business and small, you know, income. Mm -hmm. And we can manage with everything we can do by ourselves. But now what happened? I tried to do something else, but what can I do? Come back to, you know, for, you know, for ask for income support or not. Mm. What can I do? Mm. What can I do now? I just, you know, I don't know what to do now. It's really, you know, it's killing us. I mean, let's face it, in every community you need small businesses. That's right. You know, it's one to say you've got all the big guys doing all the, all the work. Because those guys will mo monopolize the whole scheme, charge you whatever they want. And you know, you haven't got a choice but to pay. The whole idea, the whole concept of businesses, you need small businesses. Yeah. And if you're killing off the small businesses like they're doing to us, then I mean, what else is there? But the decision was made. The land was sold and the 82-year-old Pioneer Market would be demolished for redevelopment. But my mother-in-law always said that the only way to christen your child was to bring it through the Pioneer Market in the frame. And that was a, a, a um, baby's bit to, to be christened. You've got to go to the Pioneer Market. But people used to have to leave their prams outside, which they could do then, because there was no room. You could not stand in the market. It was just bustling with Especially people. Especially this avenue. This avenue was the busiest. That was the busiest, because that was the main food. Hard to oh, believe oh. now, when you look yeah. at it now. Very hard. Can you have the same effect? Oh, the light's shutting down. Cash walking out of the shop for the last time. And there we go, to pastures new. Get the back, home.